How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport and yeah it's been a few weeks since I've uploaded a video and that is mostly due to the fact that it is so damn hot it's near impossible to work on these cars and the work that I've done has been just your regular maintenance on my daily drivers and it's kind of boring didn't feel like uploading that and just wanted to get it out of the way I also took a nice family vacation and a lot of just relaxing time so with that out of the way we're gonna dive into this beautiful car back here that is a CL 600 and speaking of daily drivers if you guys haven't seen the videos on this car this is a Jaguar XJ it's a 2006 it's become my daily driver. I absolutely love it. And there'll be a video coming out on this with my experience daily driving this. It's gonna be a good one too, because I'm gonna compare it to another car that I had in the beginning of this channel. Now back to this. This is a car you guys might know. It's a subscriber's car that I've had on the channel quite a few times. It had a flood issue with the AC drain not too long ago, and that killed off our PSE pump, which is in your back and uh, we replaced it out. Now we had some issues. I didn't say anything about this in any of the videos. I ordered in a couple different pumps uh, that didn't work. One actually just completely came in dead. Uh, I ordered in another one and ironically it had the little nipples that lead to uh, your hose lines were smaller and I'd never seen that one before. And I know there's a few variations on these pumps. So you gotta be careful when ordering one in. And uh, I think I've got this resolved now. Ironically, our parts car, which is a 97 sedan, if you guys don't know, I got another parts car, uh, another W140 S500, has the same pump. So I'm gonna show you guys how to change this out. It's very easy. Uh, I suggest getting a rebuilt pump or something certified if you can. If not, buying a used pump is a, is a decent way to go, but make sure you can get your money back. I was able to get my money back on the one that arrived dead. Uh, I did buy it on eBay. So just make sure you communicate with who you're buying it with and make sure that you get some kind of guarantee with it. So what you need to do is, and if this is a sedan or a coupe, you're still gonna pull this back seat out. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into the back seat fairly easy on both those cars there's little uh, tabs up underneath here you slide and i'm gonna have to use both my hands so i'm gonna get in there and pull that out we're gonna pull the pump out that's in there and then i'm gonna show you guys a couple of pumps that i have so you can see kind of a variation and what makes them unique and different and why they're different so let's go ahead and get this out and we'll talk about that and we'll get the new pump in hopefully it resolves our lock issue because he has no locks right now Okay, this plug can be a little tricky and I've broken them before and I've seen these mostly broken unfortunately And it's very simple. You just want to remove these smaller plugs here first There's only one on this vehicle You pull that up and then you slide it forward and that'll pull the bigger plug directly out to put it back on You reverse it. you put that back down slide it and then plug your smaller plugs in Way simpler than it seems sometimes when you look at it now This is where the difficult part comes in play is removing uh, your wires here, your hoses, I mean. These pieces can break very easily. You can break the, the male ends. These female end hose lines break all the time when people try to remove them. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut all these off, pull this out of here so I can show you guys my technique to it. It's not perfect, but it does work for me pretty much every single time without damaging it. Well guys, here is my PSC pump collection that I've got. Now two of them I ordered off eBay recently to try to fix this uh, CL600 and two of them came out of parts cars. This one just came out of our parts car, and you can see I cut the hose lines uh, so I can show you guys how to take those off. Now, one big thing is to take a photo of the top of your pump before taking it off and kind of note what you have. Now, I'm gonna talk about what each one of these lines does, and I'm gonna put a kind of a list on the screen so you can understand them. It can be confusing because if you have an older car, uh, it could be different than a newer car. Now, the one that really throws me off is this pump here that I ordered because the male nipples here are a lot smaller and none of these connectors would fit on this. So I'm not even sure what this is for, even though it was listed uh, for a W140S class. So I'm not exactly sure if maybe it came out of a different car and they guided me wrong, but uh, they did give me my money back. So not too upset about that. And then um, I ordered this one here, which was in the car just now, and this one came dead on arrival. So it made a noise when I hooked it up. Never again could I get it to work. And I knew it was in the car because um, when I hadn't hooked this one up, which is working, but has broken nipples on it, so I couldn't use it because it wouldn't hold any air. Uh, but this one does function. So <laughs> we are now left with this one. So let's go ahead and talk about what each one of these does. You can see some of them have uh, four prongs, some of them have five prongs, and there is a reason for that, and it's based on features, model, etc. So if we look at these closely, we're gonna look at what this black hose is here, it's SFG, 
and SFG is your trunk lid grip. So that's the, that metal piece that pops out of your trunk when you open it up. A lot of those are failing. One is failing on my old car, uh, and it can be from your pump. It can be a broken hose line. In my case, there's a diaphragm inside your trunk that opens up and allows that to come out. Mine had actually broken inside there. So very common for that to happen. A lot of people try to fix them, but it is difficult to get into that trunk. There's not a lot of room. Um, so some people just leave them to go. So that's what that is. Now, if yours is broken, you can cap these off. Uh, you can basically buy a um, vacuum line cap off kit. And I did that. And we're going to be capping one of these off because... Um, the backup rods RH, which is, I don't know if it's on any, oh yeah, it's, it's blanked off on each one of these. So these are for the older cars. Uh, that is your backup rods. It would be an orange hose and you can see here RH. This one actually has it. So this is obviously an older pump and you can see here, this one is blocked off. Now, after that, we're going to look at your, the FKS, which is your rear headrest restraint. So if you've got the, uh, vacuum actuated headrest, that's why there's two lines coming off this. You're gonna have this. So we need to cap that one off because we do not have the vacuum actuated headrest uh, for this car. So we're gonna go ahead and cap that one off, but it is on uh, both these pumps. The one that I ordered in that wasn't working as well as this, uh, but you can see here on our parts car, the old one that had the broken nipples, it was not on there. The next uh, couple of things, you've got P plus and P minus, that should be on all of them. Um, that's these top ones right here. And the P plus is your lumbar support for your seat, those always end up breaking. I think the, the bags inside of those end up bursting and they cause a lot of issues with these because they'll run. Uh, sometimes it causes these things to shut down. So make sure they're shut off on your seat if you've got those. I don't know if you can cap those off and keep them capped off, but um, we're gonna keep them hooked up and probably not use them. I don't know if his works in there, but I'm gonna test that out as well. And then the uh, the P negative is your manifold vacuum. So that's going to the car. So I believe your car can actually run bad if this is not hooked up properly. So that's kind of a quick explanation, still a little confusing to me. I've been pulling these pumps in and out for a while. And this is the first time I've noticed so many different variations uh, when ordering. I ordered uh, one for my old car and I actually pulled one from a parts car. Ironically, both were perfectly matched up to what I had. So I had no issues. I just plugged them right in and was good to go. Now, what I'm gonna show you guys here is I, I said I was gonna show you the tool that I use to take these off. So I'm gonna show you guys how I pull these off, but be very careful, even using this tool, which I got from a local auto parts store, uh, you can damage them. So what I'm gonna do is kind of slide this on here and I'm gonna pull up. I'm not gonna pry it, because if I want if it bends back, there's a good chance that that nipple can snap off. So I'm gonna slide it up under there. I'm gonna pull straight up while using my hands to pull this off. I found that to be the best way to get them off. Guys, it's the next day and I got some bad news. Every time I try to use the lock button in the center, we blow fuse number 11, which is for our PSE pump. Now, a lot of times that will blow if the pump is going itself. So if the pump is overworking because there's a leak somewhere, uh, it could cause a short and then the pump can actually go bad as well. I think in this case, because obviously we just hooked it up, plugged it in and it blew the fuse as soon as we hit the button. I think we have a short in one of our wires and I'm gonna explain that to you. Now, unfortunately, it just started to rain and we're about to have a major storm. I've got to get that fuse changed out and these windows rolled up because one of the other things that that fuse controls is when you shut these doors, those windows will go up. So I need to get that fuse in, but I wanted to get this video out there because I've got a lot to do on my hands now to get this thing functioning properly. I am almost positive that because when we had the water intrusion, this plug here was all corroded, all messed up and actually seized to the old pump. I think we have an issue in here with some sort of ground and it's just causing uh, to blow. So I don't want to blow the pump. I still think the pump is good. So what I'm going to do is cut this wiring out and solder in the wiring from our parts car and hopefully, fingers crossed, that should fix this issue because I love this car. The owner of the car loves it. He daily drives it. And it's just one small thing. It's not a bad Mustang. It's just one small thing that's keeping him from really enjoying this car on, on a regular basis. But with that said, hopefully we get this fixed on the next video. You guys have an awesome day, a blessed week, and I'll catch you on the next one.